In this video, we will try to understand the steps for the RCC design of simply supported doubly reinforced rectangular beam as per IS456-2000 for the examination point of view. So let us start. First of all, read the problem statement carefully. Generally, restricted width and total depth of the beam are specified in the problem statement. Then note down the given data. Start the solution by computation of stresses and effective depth of beam in step number one. So get the values of FCK and FY. Next, to calculate effective depth of beam, assume nominal clear cover based on the clause 26.4.2 table 16. Take clear cover equal to 30 mm for moderate exposure in absence of exposure data. Next, assume appropriate bar diameter. For simplicity, take the bar diameter equal to 20 mm. Next, calculate the effective cover by adding the clear cover with the half of the bar diameter. Then, compute the effective depth by deducting effective cover from total depth of beam. Next, if clear span and support width of the beam is given instead of an effective cover, then we need to calculate the effective span of the beam as per clause 22.2 of IS456-2000. As per the clause, the effective span of the beam shall be taken as clear span plus the effective depth of the beam or center to center of the support, whichever is less. If only clear span is given, then take the effective span equal to clear span plus effective depth. If only center to center span of the beam is given in problem statement, then take the effective span equal to that value. In step 2, calculate the loads acting on the beam. First, calculate the self weight or a dead load of a beam in kilonewton per meter by multiplying the cross-sectional area of a beam with concrete density. Consider the concrete density as 25 kilonewton per meter cube by referring to IS456 clause 19.2.1. While the live load or imposed load on the beam is generally given in problem statement. Next, calculate the total load by adding dead load and imposed load. Next, calculate the total designed or factored load intensity. For this, multiply the total load with partial safety factor gamma F given in the table 18. For dead load plus imposed load combination, it is equal to 1.5. This way, we get the analytical model of simply supported beam as shown in figure 1 to calculate bending moment and shear force. In step 3, do the computation of the ultimate bending moment and ultimate shear force due to factored loads. For simply supported beam with UDL, the ultimate bending moment MU is equal to WL square by 8 and the shear force is equal to WL by 2. Next, compute the limiting moment of resistance of beam section in step number 4. For this, use the expression specified in clause G1.1C of IS456. In this expression, put the value of XU max by D for a given steel grade from page number 70 of IS456. If this limiting moment of resistance is less than the ultimate bending moment MU acting on the beam, then we can say that beam section is not sufficient to resist the acting bending moment MU. Generally, in singly reinforced beam, the size of beam section will be increased to make the moment of resistance more than acting bending moment. But here, as the beam size is restricted, we cannot increase it. Hence, 
In such cases, beam needs to be designed as doubly reinforced section to increase the moment of a resistance. But if the limiting moment of resistance is more than the ultimate bending moment MU, then design the beam as a singly reinforced beam. In doubly reinforced section, the reinforcement is provided in tension zone as well as in compression zone. The steel provided in compression zone is called as compressive steel, while the steel provided in tension zone is called as tensile steel. So, compute the required area of a compressive steel ASC and tensile steel AST in step number 5. Let us calculate the compressive steel ASC by referring the expression given in the clause G1.2 of IS456. Rearrange this expression to get the value of compressive steel ASC. Here D dash is the effective cover to the compressive steel. Assume D dash equal to 50 mm if not specified in problem statement. Here FSC is designed stress in compression reinforcement corresponding to a strain of epsilon SC. Now compute strain epsilon SC by getting the value of XU max for a specified steel grade as per clause 38.1. Let us see the computation of stress FSC corresponding to strain epsilon SC. Table A of SP161980 specified the values of FSC and epsilon SC in tabular format for different steel grade and stress levels. We can also find these values in some standard textbooks of RCC design. Generally, these values are supplied in tabular format during the examination. So let us try to understand the computation of stress FSC with the help of typical example. Let us assume steel grade as Fe415, hence Fy equals to 415 Newton per mm square and calculated epsilon SC equal to 0.00289. So, in table A for Fy equals to 415 Newton per mm square, the strain value is lying between 0.00276 and 0 0.00380. Hence, the value of FSC will be lying between corresponding stress value that is 351.8 and 360.9 Newton per mm square. Here we can calculate the FSC by using linear interpolation formula. Let us mark the values of x1, y1, x2, y2, x and y. By putting all these values in the interpolation formula, we get FSC equal to 352.93 Newton per mm square. Now, Compute the required area of a compressive steel ASC by putting all the required values. Next, compute the total area of a tension reinforcement AST by referring the clause G1.2 of IS456. The AST is the summation of AST1 and AST2, where AST1 is the area of a tensile reinforcement for a singly reinforced section for MU limiting and ASC2 is equal to ASC into FSC divided by 0.87 Fy. To get the value of AST1, refer the expression given in clause G1.1a of IS456. In this formula, replace xu by d with xu max by d and ast with ast1. 
rearrange the equation to calculate AST1. Next, compute AST2 by referring the expression given in clause G1.2. Now, compute the AST by adding AST1 and AST2. Next, check the minimum area of a steel required. Use the expression given in clause 26.5.1.1a of IS456. Rearrange the expression and get the minimum area of a steel required. So, the required area of a tensile steel should be maximum of AST and AST minimum. In next step, fix the number of bars to be provided as compressive steel. So, select the suitable bar diameter. The usual diameter of bar chosen are 10, 12, 16, 20, 25 and 32 mm. Calculate the area of a 1 bar. Then calculate number of bars. Round it off to nearest integer. Minimum number of bars should be 2 and maximum 6 bars should be used in one layer in a beam. Next, calculate area of a compressive steel provided. Provide the bars at top which is compression phase of simply supported beam. Similarly, fix the number of bars to be provided as tensile steel by selecting suitable bar diameter. Provide these bars at the bottom which is tension phase of the beam. In step 6, check the feasibility of the beam section and reinforcement for the shear stress. Calculate nominal shear stress tau V by using the equation given in clause 40.1 of IS456. Next, get the maximum shear stress tau C max from table 20 of IS456-2000. As per clause 40.2.3, Tau C max must be more than Tau V. Next, calculate the design shear strength based on the percentage area of a steel provided and grade of concrete from table 19 of IS456. So, calculate the percentage area of a tensile steel provided. Next, Calculate the value of tau C from table 19 of IS456 for percentage tensile steel provided and concrete grade. Let us try to understand this process by assuming M20 grade concrete and 0.756 percentage of steel. In table 19, the percentage value PT is lying between 0.75 and 1. Hence, the value of tau C is also between corresponding values 0.56 and 0.62 for M20 grade of concrete. Here, we can calculate the tau C by using linear interpolation formula. Let us mark the values of x1, x2, y1, y2, x and y. By putting all these values, in the interpolation formula, we get y equal to 0.561, which is the value of tau c. Next, check whether tau v is more than tau c. If yes, then as per clause 40.4, design the shear reinforcement. If tau v is less than tau c, then provide the minimum shear reinforcement as per clause 26.5.1.6 Now, let us see the steps involved in design of shear reinforcement if tau v is greater than tau c. As per the clause 26.5.1.6, the shear reinforcement shall be provided to carry a shear equal to vu minus tau c into bd. Next, assume legs and diameter of vertical stirrups. Two leg stirrups of diameter 6, 8, 10 or 12 mm are very commonly used. Hence, 
For simplicity, you can assume two-legged 6mm or 8mm dia vertical stirrups. Next, calculate total cross-section area of stirrup leg ASV by multiplying number of legs with cross-section area of stirrup bar. The spacing of the stirrups can be calculated by referring equation given in clause 26.5.1.6 for vertical stirrup. Rearrange this equation to get the stirrup spacing SV. Next, calculate the stirrup spacing based on minimum shear reinforcement criteria using the expression given in clause 26.5.1.6. Rearrange this expression to get the minimum spacing. As per clause 26.5.1.5, the maximum spacing of the stirrup shall not exceed 0.75 times the effective depth of the beam. Also, the stirrup spacing should not be more than 300 mm in any case. So, calculate the third value of stirrup spacing equal to 0.75 times effective depth and the fourth value of stirrup spacing which is equal to 300 mm. Now, provide the stirrup spacing as the minimum value of the first, second, third and fourth spacing. Now, let us see the steps involved in providing minimum shear reinforcement if tau v is less than tau c. As explained previously, assume legs and diameter of vertical stirrups. Next, calculate total area of a stirrup legs ASV. Next, calculate the minimum shear reinforcement spacing as discussed previously. Next, compute maximum allowable stirrup spacing equal to 0.75 times effective depth and 300 mm as discussed earlier. Now provide the stirrup spacing as the minimum value of the first, second and third spacing. Finally, write the summary of design and draw the reinforcement details. The design summary should include the grade of concrete and steel used, width and depth of the beam, and reinforcement details for bars at top, bottom, and vertical stirrups. The reinforcement sketch should include the longitudinal section and cross section of the beam with all the dimensions and reinforcement details. If you like this video, then subscribe this channel to get the interesting videos for visual and simplified learning of various civil engineering topics.